Hi, friends. Here comes the second installment of Unimaginable Soviet Machinery. Subscribe and let's go. The next machine I want to tell you about is a screw-propelled vehicle. Yes, you heard that right. A screw-propelled vehicle. It's a machine that moves on huge screws, like an airplane. Except it doesn't fly, it travels on land. And it's not some kind of toy, but a real monster that was created in 1972 at the Zill Design Bureau. The same one that developed the legendary Zill 167. This experimental model was simply enormous 8.5 meters in length, over 3 meters in width and height, with a clearance of over 1 meter. To reduce weight, the cabin was made of fiberglass, and the huge screws were made of lightweight alloys. As a result, the machine weighed 7 tons and could carry a load weighing up to 2.5 tons. The screws were powered by two production 8-cylinder Zill engines, each with 180 horsepower. Looks cool, doesn't it? But what was it needed for? Well, firstly, to travel through snow, ice, swamps, and other difficult terrains where regular vehicles could get stuck. Secondly, to surprise and intimidate enemies with its unusual appearance. Overall, Soviet engineers loved to experiment with different shapes and designs of vehicles, and sometimes they got very strange and amusing results. For example, what do you think about a tank with a turret and wings? Yes, you heard that right, a tank with a turret and wings. This was the Mars one project, one of the most ambitious developments of its time, representing a wheeled tracked flying tank created in 1937 by engineer Mikhail Smolkov based on the light tank BT-7. It featured an unusual design with a streamlined body and foldable elements for flight. These elements included straight retractable wings and a tail assembly consisting of a stabilizer, keel, and elevators for altitude and directional control. For flight, the tank was supposed to use a two-blade airscrew located at the front. While on the ground, its movement was provided by the wheeled tracked chassis. The tank crew consisted of two people a driver and a commander, and the armament included a 12.7mm heavy machine gun BK in the turret, and a 7.62mm aviation machine gun chasse, which could fire through the propeller shaft channel. The Maz-1 tank was conceived as a multi-purpose vehicle for ground and aerial reconnaissance and participation in airborne operations. But, as you might have guessed, this project was never implemented because it was too complex, expensive, and impractical. Moreover, more efficient and reliable methods of delivering tanks by air, such as parachutes or gliders, were already being developed at that time. The legendary object 279, dubbed the Super Tank, emerged from Leningrad under the helm of the renowned designer Joseph Kotin around 1959. This tank resembled an extraterrestrial entity, sporting an ellipsidal body akin to a boat or even a flying saucer. Its distinctive shape wasn't merely aesthetic, it was engineered to resist overturning under the impact of a nuclear blast wave. Yes, you heard it right. This tank was engineered for nuclear warfare. Another remarkable feature of Object 279 was its four caterpillar tracks, an atypical design for tanks. This feature enabled the tank to traverse terrain where conventional tanks might falter, such as deep snow or marshy areas, effectively overcoming various obstacles without the risk of getting stuck. However, Object 279 had its drawbacks. Its size and construction rendered it unwieldy, demanding considerable effort for maintenance and repairs. Its towering profile and complex manufacturing process made it impractical for widespread use. Consequently, this tank remained a sole specimen now on display in Kabinka. The colossal dump truck Bala 75501, unveiled in 1985, marked a significant leap in engineering prowess and technological advancement. The goal was to develop a vehicle that surpassed its predecessors in capacity and power while tackling new challenges. Faced with a shortage of tires suitable in size, engineers conceived the idea of using paired wheels to achieve the required load capacity and ensure uniform load distribution. However, 
Employing paired wheels posed a new challenge for the designers. How to preserve the maneuverability of such a behemoth without sacrificing internal volume? The solution lay in the development of a unique articulated frame, allowing the cabin to rotate about a vertical axis connecting the vehicles to halves. This innovative solution culminated in the creation of a colossal 15-meter dump truck with a turning radius of 16.5 meters, a truly impressive feat. At its core was a robust 3150 horsepower V12 engine, propelling the 280-ton vehicle even under full load. Notably, all wheels were driven and equipped with permanent magnet DC traction motors, enhancing efficiency and productivity. The project of a transportation vehicle based on electromagnetic levitation technology, devised in the Soviet Union in 1985, represented a revolutionary approach to public transit. It promised speeds of up to 250 km per hour with minimal noise, rivaling the most modern transportation systems worldwide. The successful maiden launch of an experimental carriage on February 25, 1986, in the Moscow region showcased the technology's potential, paving the way for high-speed transportation systems capable of swift and efficient long-distance travel at low operational costs. The construction cost of one kilometer of such a road was estimated to be three to five times cheaper compared to building a metro system. However, the project was shelved, seemingly in the 90s, as some opposed the emergence of such competitive transportation alternatives. In 1961, amidst the world's tremors from the power of the Tsar Bomba, Soviet scientists and engineers were not idle. They launched the 295 Lal into the skies an atomic aircraft with a nuclear reactor on board. Yes, you heard it right, a nuclear reactor. It was a super ambitious project aimed at solving the problem of flight range and duration. Imagine, an aircraft capable of flying continuously, without the need for refueling, powered by nuclear energy. It would have been a revolution in aviation, especially for the military and reconnaissance. But, as you can imagine, it wasn't that simple. Firstly, the technology was still raw and hazardous. Secondly, safety concerns were paramount. What if the aircraft crashed or exploded? It would be like a nuclear bomb, only worse. Therefore, most flights were conducted with the reactor turned off, and when it was operational, it operated at minimal power. In the end, the 295 LAL project was shut down due to high risks and costs. Interestingly, the US was also exploring atomic aviation at the same time, but came to the same conclusion that it wasn't worth it. But wait, there's more. There's another project that will astonish and amaze you. Soviet engineers devised a way to combine the capabilities of a ship and an aircraft, creating the unique rocket ship Akranoplan of Project 903 Lan. It looked like a massive aircraft that had landed on the water, but it was actually a ship. This monster was launched into the water in 1986 and served until 2001, astounding with its size and construction. Lun was designed to destroy surface ships weighing up to 20,000 tons, but its main advantage was its ability to move at high speeds above the water surface, thanks to the ground effect, which allowed it to avoid water resistance. This gave it a huge advantage over conventional ships. Moreover, the Akranoplan could remain unnoticed by ship radars, making it perfect for surprise attacks. Thanks to this and its invulnerability to torpedoes, Lun was nearly unbeatable at sea. But that's not all. The Akranoplan could move not only above water, but also over land, further expanding its capabilities. The most fantastic project, unfortunately never realized, was the flying submarine on which Boris Yushikov worked in the 1930s. He proposed the idea of a hydroplane capable of not only flying, but also submerging underwater, which was a revolutionary approach in naval warfare strategy at the time. From 1934 to 1937, Yushikov developed his project, and in 1936, it was presented for consideration by the Rakhok. Despite initial interest, the project was suspended in 1939 and resumed only in 1943, when military needs and technological capabilities significantly changed. A prototype was built by 1947, 
but by that time, changes in Soviet naval warfare strategy led to the project's closure. It was envisioned that the three-engine aircraft could cover its engines with special metal plates, dive to the water surface, submerge, and launch attacks on surface and underwater targets using torpedoes. In underwater mode, the apparatus could reach depths of 45 meters and achieve speeds of up to 3 knots, while in air mode, its speed could reach 185 kilometers per hour. Remarkable, isn't it? It's a shame that this project ultimately never came to fruition. In the early 1960s, Soviet engineers unveiled their beast the experimental off-road vehicle ZIL S-167 which caused a wave of admiration thanks to its outstanding cross-country capabilities in the Siberian taiga. This beauty impressed the American intelligence services so much that they were almost on the verge of panic. Their spy satellites learned to track it down in various corners in no time, leading to the belief that there was a whole army of such snowmobiles ready to storm the USA through the North Pole. But in reality, all these photos and videos were just a parade of the same vehicle, which, being a true cross-country tank, simply raced through rough terrain. The Zill S-167 boasted impressive specs, 9.5 meters in length, a minimum ground clearance of 750 millimeters, and a weight of 12 tons. Yet it could carry up to 5 tons of cargo, or up to 18 people in its fiberglass body equipped with additional heaters and a backup stove. This beast was powered by two powerful 180 horsepower Zil V8 gasoline engines, installed one each on the wheels of the right and left sides in the stern, and operated in tandem with the three-speed automatic transmission. Despite its maximum speed of only 75 kmh, the Zil S167 challenged everything that moved. Its only drawback was its enormous fuel consumption, a whopping 100 liters per 100 kilometers. The front and rear axle wheels worked on independent torsion suspension, while the middle axle was firmly attached to the frame. But the coolest feature was the ability of the front and rear wheels to turn, making this machine simply unmatched. In short, folks, that was the Zil S167, the most formidable and invincible off-road vehicle of its time. Well, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and until next time.